hi in this video i'm going to teach you how to identify the most common faults on a failed laptop using the laptop schematic of course i made a video before about the most common faults on a laptop but i explain to you in the motherboard but this time in do i will explain to you in the schematic and the schematic is a very important and advanced method that you can identify the faults easily very easily okay because you will figure out the problem easily so let's get started so let's take any circuit in the motherboard of course all motherboard circuits are has the same working principle you will always find an ic as you can see here okay so we will find an ic or a controller ic as you can see so then we have two MOSFETs here basically we have two channels this is a channel for a 5 volt and another ch channel for 3 volt only so this is a very important circuit this is a 3 volt 5 volt circuit so we have the control IC then we have the upper MOSFET as you can see here and we have over here the lower MOSFET okay the same for the other channel we have the upper MOSFET and the lower MOSFET okay then we have the inductor here we use this inductor to increase the current in the circuit then as you can see over here we have a filtering capacitor this is a polarized capacitor or electrolytic capacitor the same also here we have inductor the same as here okay and we have a filtering capacitor and over here we will get 3.3 volt always and here we will get 5 volt always so now if you have for example in your laptop a failed 3 volt 5 volt circuit okay you determine or you identify that 3 volt and 5 volt always are missing what should you do and how to diagnose how you can begin your diagnostic and how to identify the faulty component so the first thing here that we should pay attention to is so let me change the color let me pick this color for example in order to make tank easier so the first tank to check as you can see here you can check just visually in the motherboard you will, you can check visually or you have to check first visually all these components including to IC the state IC is it good or not do you feel any heat overheat or not you should check also the MOSFETs in both channels okay the state of MOSFET the, the pinout of MOSFET is it connected to the motherboard correctly or not and of course the inductor and the, the capacitors and of course you can check also some ceramic capacitor as this because the ceramic capacitor also could resolve the problem of faulty laptop or a dead laptop so the first thing to check here is what is this voltage as you can see so after doing a visual inspection you should check the input voltage as you can see here we have the dc bat okay the dc bat equal usually to 19 volt so without this power and also here for this channel here also we have the 19 volt so this is basically 19 volt so without this power as you can see here 19 volt nothing will be happen here in the circuit okay so now i have a question where exactly can i check whether we have 19 volt is present or not so you can check it here in the drain of the mosfet here okay as you know the drain of the mosfet four pins connected together you can check 19 volt is it present or not in any pin over here and of course you can check also 19 volt here in this side of ceramic capacitors but you cannot uh, know exactly where is the side that is connected to the 19 volt you should check this side and this side so i prefer to check 19 volt here in the drain of the mosfet the first mosfet here also the same thing
So, so if you find 19, 19 volt here in the drain of these two MOSFETs, and you still didn't get these two voltages, 5 volt always and 3.3 volt always, these two main voltages, then what we should, we should check after that. So we get here 19 volt. Okay, so we should check, guess what? We should check the control signal. You know the MOSFET? Here we have the MOSFET, okay? This is the drain of this MOSFET, four pins connected together. Here we have th three pins connected together. This is the source. And over here we have the gate, as you can see. This is the control signal. Do you see here we have drive high? The drive signal or the control signal? Here for the first MOSFET or the higher or the upper MOSFET we have drive high one. Okay, and for this lower MOSFET we have, as you can see here, drive low one. Okay, so you should check, as you see, as you know, this control signals in the gauge of these two MOSFETs. The same thing for these two MOSFETs also. We have here drive high two, as you can see, goes directly to pin number four of the MOSFET. Always the pin number four of any MOSFET means the gates okay and over here as you can see we have as you can see here drive high drive low two as you can see so we get here 19 volt we should then check the control signal the gates is it received the control signal or not basically the control signal can be about less than 5 volts okay it could be 1.8 volt 2 volt it could be 1.2 volt depending in the type of the ic and the mosfet okay so i have a question here for example here we want to get 3.3 volts okay and here we have 19 volts so once this ic controls or send a control signal here to the gate this MOSFET will be operated. So, how many voltage will be passed to here? Is it 19 volt? No, impossible. Here we should get just 3.3 volt. So, this MOSFET, as you can see, here we have 19 volt, here we will get plus or minus 3.3 volt. You know why? Because the IC controls the amount of the voltage that should be passed here to the drain of the second MOSFET. Normally, it should pass just 3.3 volt, but this is electronic and this is hardware. Even if we want that 3.3 volt to pass, we can get here 3.4 volt or even 4 volt. That's why we call this MOSFET that is connected to the ground over here in its source. So basically this MOSFET adjusts and compensates the voltage here. If there is any extra voltage or residual voltage, it will transform it directly to the ground, okay? The same thing here for this circuit. We have here 19 volt, we should get here just five volts, okay? So here we will get 3.3 volt, then this 3.3 volt will pass to this inductor. So this inductor will increase the current for this voltage. And then here, here we have the filtering capacitor and then we will get 3.3 volt. So the same working principle here. We have inductor and filtering capacitor. Now we can understand easily the faulty component that could be faulty in any circuit in the motherboard. So the main component is usually the faulty component that we encountered while diagnosing any laptop motherboard. So the first component that can cause a faulty laptop or a dead laptop is this IC, the control IC, okay? The control IC can be shorted to the ground. So. As you can see here, for example, so if you focus here, as you can see, 
let me show you here we have the eyes okay and here we have two capacitors connected to the ground so i have a question right now how can we check whether any ic this ic for example is shorted to the ground or not basically you can, the ic contain many pinouts or pins you cannot identify if the ic is bad or not unless you feel that the ice is very hot in its body so the tips or the trick is using this ceramic capacitor you know these two ceramic capacitors are connected to the ground so in order to check whether the ice this ice is shorted or not you can just check these two ceramic capacitors normally the ceramic capacitor if you use the multimeter and you put the black probe here okay and to lose probe here you should not get any continuity in the multimeter or low resistors the same for this one if you put the black probe here and the red probe here you should not get any continuity or buzzer on the multimeter but if you get so if you check this thermos fields and you get a buzzer or a continuity means automatically the IC is shorted to the ground. Okay, the IC is shorted to the ground. Now you can hear, you, you, you will wonder why. Because here also the IC is connected to the ground via another capacitor, as, as you can see. We have here another capacitor. This capacitor is connected to the ground in the second terminal and to the IC in the first terminal. You will find many capacitors like those capacitors that are connected to the ground in one side and to the IC in the other side. So if you check, if you find that many of ceramic capacitors are shorted in both sides to the ground, means automatically the IC is bad. So then the most common fault that you can encounter in a failed laptop motherboard is the MOSFETs. This MOSFETs especially this one because this one is connected to the ground also this one then you can find here a shorted chemical capacitor because this capacitor also connected to the ground in this side it could be shorted or blowed out the same for this capacitor also uh, basically for the inductor it could be cutted like this if the inductor is cutted or removed from its place the voltage will not pass here okay but for example if there is a problem with the inductor for example if you check here you will find 5 volts and here you will not find 5 volts means the inductor is faulty and of course sometimes you can find that the shorted components are ceramic capacitors those could be the faulty component here or even those here Okay. this capacitor also could be the faulty component so basically this is the most important tips that you should understand so if you understand the circuit you can troubleshoot and analyze any other circuit whatever the type of the laptop because the working principle is always the same we have the controls we have the control IC and we have MOSFETs, inductor, and capacitor. So this is basically the most common fault that you can find while analyzing or diagnosing a failed circuit in the motherboard. And of course, you can ask me why here we have these resistors as all these capacitors. So basically, these resistors are used just to stabilize and to protect this ice. Okay. But seldom, nearly, rarely, this component is failed. Okay, so that's all about this video. Thank you very much, guys. And please don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And don't forget, please, to like the video because your likes motivate me to upload more and more videos. Okay, and of course, if you have the opportunity to share the video with other people like you, I will appreciate that. Thank you very much. And 
for for anyone who want to join me in the Patreon page in my in my Patreon page you are very welcome I upload there every day in a daily basis schematic for laptops including HP deal all types of MOSFETs and of course I upload more unique content so you are very welcome and of course the schematics that I upload in my Patreon page some are free i find it in the surfing the internet and uploading that schematic and some i buy it and i made it for you in my partner page just for free you can upload any schematic for free 100 percent thank you very much and see you in the next video